state the purpose of the agreement, list the services to be provided. So in this case, it would be buyer and EMS. Specify how the service through the agreement will be financed. And I know that's important for everyone, and I'll get into finances a little bit later in the presentation. Specify the duration of the agreement, provide renewal or cancellation. And then lastly, again, file electronically uh, with the state and county. How will this be managed? So each of the governing body establishes an agency, appoints a representative or representatives to, re to represent their own uh, piece of government. This represented body is usually called a board of directors. Um, some other uh, departments in the state call them trustees, but we have trustees on the department. The rural has trustees, so we don't want to use that terminology. We'll stick with board of directors. The board of directors manages the department just as the city council. So usually the board hires a part time clerk or financial officer to manage the paperwork and finances of the agency. This person builds a function similar to a city or township clerk. How do we finance? So there are a couple of disadvantages. And I don't really think there's disadvantages, but just something I want to make sure that we point out. So one disadvantage is the inability to tax for bond. So the 28E agency in and of itself cannot levy taxes. That tax money has to come from the rural and from the city. Um, just as I said, the individual government bodies will be formed. Thus, the city and township must use their taxing authority to levy a tax upon the agency. So, very similar to how it's done now city levies tax money, rural levies tax money, they put it together and use that to fund the department. So that was what we were saying. <coughs> the second disadvantage is 2018 does not provide a method to equitably fund the agency by cities and townships. So thus it's recommended to use the Iowa cost share fund. Uh, I will go into that here in a little bit. It's not easy, um, but I will try to give you the abbreviated version of it so you can kind of understand how those calculations come together. After that cost share is determined, the financing governments tax and tax the money to the agency. So the agency will manage all the funds that come in from the tax rate. The agency develops the budget and manages its money in the same way that a city council uh, would manage the budget as it is now. So here's the Iowa cost share form. And Dave, I don't know, is this, did Oster come up with this? Uh, I think he was. Okay. Partially responsible for that. There are a number of departments uh, throughout the state that use this formula. Um, so basically, the cost share is assessed property valuation plus total calls plus population, and then divided by how many other um, body government bodies there are. Um, so what we have done is gotten some very preliminary numbers um, to fill these in and calculate this formula. This just goes into those assumptions, population, uh, not all townships are covered 100% by the Westerly Fire Department. So we had to cancel some of those out. Falls of I-80 and uh, other areas, we excluded from the population because those aren't necessarily people or taxpayers in, in the area that we uh, service. So here is the cost share formula for population. And again, this is kind of a, an estimate uh, based on some information that we have collected. Um, one of the things that we're going to do if we proceed, which I hope we do proceed, is get with um, the treasurer of Muscatine County uh, and sit down with them and get actual absolute numbers so that we can calculate this. So this is just an example that shows um, what our populations are. In each of our townships. And if we look at that calculation right now in population, the rural has about 41% and the city has 59%. So if we look at assessed value, again, here's our townships, um, the city down below. And if we look at those calculations, the rural has about 69.9% and the city 30%. Uh, how it comes to the assessed value. Total number of calls. 
So if we look at our rural versus city, we're almost down. Uh, we're about 49.4% in the rural and the city at 50.6. Mm -hmm. So if we take that kind of just using our baseline numbers um, that we collected, uh, it would work out that rural would have about 53% and city would be about 46% uh, that would make up our total budget. So if we just took an example of an annual budget for fire at 150,000, which is high. And the reason we put that 150 in there is to have some replacement um, equipment costs in there. But our fire budget, if you look over the last four, four to six years, probably averages around 85 to 90 thousand dollars a year. But if we use just this formula um, and use 150 thousand just as a baseline, the rural would have to pay 80 thousand, and the city would be at roughly 70 thousand. So they're all very close. To So there are a number of different steps uh, to form this 28 agency. I have some more detailed ones at the end, which I'll go through uh, where I put kind of the timeline together. But basically, determine the cities and townships to form the agency. I already know that. Cities and townships agree to formally form the agency. And that's what we're hoping to get, uh, get past this evening. Determine the method to share costs among the cities and townships. Agree on disposition of current vehicles, equipment, and stations. Determine the mayor and fiscal address. Uh, agree regarding makeup and proportion of board of directors. Get that charter written, have the charter reviewed, uh, and then finally have that adopted by the township and the city. And then lastly, the final report. So here are some additional steps in forming that agency, um, primarily around the management of it. So we'll obtain employer identification number and EIN. We'll hire or select a current clerk, establish fire and emergency response department by resolution, notify 911. Um, and then five and six and seven, you know, we are currently talking through. So we are getting some quotes on a contact contract for insurance. Uh, we have bank accounts already. Uh, we need to determine about uh, transfer and title is deed. Um, so both our vehicles and the fire station. Um, with assistance from fire and EMS volunteers, we'll have to review our standard operating guidelines, our SOGs, or our procedures. Uh, we'll have to come up with our own personnel policies and procedures. We'll contract using the 28 means to provide protection to the townships, not part of the agency, but receiving protection from the agency. Write a budget, adopt a budget, uh, conduct regular agency meetings, the council, and our uh, rural trustees. So I think this is an important part. Um, you know, what are some of the people may have questions? So, do the agencies meet open meeting laws and requirements and auditing requirements? The simple answer is yes. It's a government agency. We have to abide by all of that um, process, procedures, and, and uh, legislation or whatever you want to call it. Are the agency a separate agency? Yes, indeed, they are. It's a separate governing body. Are the agencies tax exempt? Yes, they are tax exempt. And does the agency board appoint fire chief officers and volunteers? Yes, agency board. So not the fire department, not the city, but the board that governs this 2080 agency will be the ones that um, appoint. <laughs> And as you can see, this happens a lot of So yeah, basically that was just you know on who will you know recommend the the officers. Can the fire and U.S. department have a different name from the agency? Yes, it sure can. Yeah. Can the agency enter a mutual aid contract or other similar agreements? Yes, the agency has authority to enter 2018 contract agreements. So mutual aid with Nickel, mutual aid with Adelissa. Uh, we will be able to continue working as we move on. Can an agency purchase workers' compensation liability and other insurance? Yes, we're going to have to. 
Um, and we are currently um, shopping um, to get some prices and bids on what those insurance costs could be. And the volunteers are 28 agency, agency form a nonprofit to raise funds, grants, perform civic and social activities. Simple answer is yes, we can do that. Uh, one very important one is the agency is eligible for FEMA assistance and firefighter grants um, from other agencies. I think there had been some conversations way back when we first talked about this that that was not the case. It is. We are a government agency. We are eligible to get all of the grants and, and everything that would be part of this. Do the current owners of the station, trucks, and equipment have to get it to me? Ultimately, this is a public policy decision made by those holding the title of the agency. So it will be subject to negotiation by the parties establishing the agency. Transfer or leasing are options. More importantly, as with any partnering arrangement, everyone forfeits something via power, money, control, property as the nature of what they provide the service. So this quote and this information was put together by George Forster of Forster Consulting. Um, and I know the city has reached out to him and he provided um, some feedback on one of our original um, doc documents that we put together for the city. So this comes from him. He's been in the fire service for longer than I've been alive. Um, so I thought one of the things that was nice that he put in here was one way to look at this. Legally, the city or township owns the station and vehicles because they have the title to be. However, who really pay for and owns the equipment on the station? It is not, is it not the citizens of the city and townships? Do not the citizens ultimately fund the purchases and the citizens continue to own and benefit from the equipment, vehicles, and station, regardless of the legal ownership? Further, what use is a fire station or fire trucks and equipment beyond protecting the citizens of the city and townships? And again, these are, both, these are all the considerations when forming the 28 agencies. Eric, they're just having a hard time hearing you. So I'm going to try to move the owl just a little bit closer. Um, unfortunately, that speaker doesn't pick up the best. It doesn't pick up the way it claims it's supposed to. I'll try to be louder. So this is kind of what the uh, structure would look like with the board of directors. Again, uh, we've got some negotiations here or to kind of finalize this, but it would be two city council members uh, from the city administration, two fire and ambulance, fire and ambulance district rural trustees, two to three members of the community, and two uh, members of the fire department. Uh, we have an odd number. Again, we'll work through this, but. This gives the rural, this gives the city, and this gives the fire department equal say in all matters pertaining to the fire department, which I think is very important. Uh, the agency will be structured so that all invested parties will have equal rights and representation. The board of directors will include the president, vice president, will work directly with the association, elected officers on the daily operation of the association. Uh, what will the structure be? Um, so the officers and volunteers are responsible for daily operations of the fire and EMS services. Ensure financial reporting is provided to the board of directors, not only to the board of directors, but to the city and rural folks. Uh, keep board of directors informed of operations, financial status, personal updates, and forecast of equipment needs. Works with a private accounting firm to file all required tax filings and report to the state and federal governments. Um, the other thing with that is we would have uh, a yearly audit done um, and report those numbers back to both the city and rural trustees. And this is just kind of a makeup um, looking at our fire funding. So it would be the property tax revenues collected by the city. Um, it would be community member donations. Um, again, we understand you can't count on that, um, but we do get some donation there. And then the tax revenue uh, from our rural townships. Then from the EMS side, um, when we look at our um, expenditures and what it costs to run our ambulance, um, it's around, give or take 220,000, somewhere in there. Um, 
But in the last couple of years, when we look at what our expenses are versus what we collect from our ambulance calls, it's even. In fact, last year, I think we made a profit of around 12,000. Um, give or take, I'm not exactly what it was. Um, so those are going to be the things that can fund that EMS. Uh, it's pretty self-sustaining, um, but we also have federal, state, and community grants that we can apply for. And then um, also last year in legislation, uh, Iowa passed EMS as essential service. So what that means is, however, it's up to the individual counties. Um, they are able to tax now to help pay for EMS. Because currently, or before this, uh, and currently here in Muscatine County, um, EMS is not an essential service. You may be called 91, ask for an ambulance. You're not guaranteed you're going to get one. Um, with this legislation that was put in place, hopefully uh, that is going to get us where it is essential. When you dial 911, an ambulance will be there. Uh, I know because we serve as part of Johnson, part of Cedar, and mostly Muscatine, uh, Johnson and Cedar have been in talks about what they're going to be doing with the funding. I know Muscatine may be a little bit behind, but they're starting to come up. Um, so there will be some additional money there, uh, hopefully for our audience. Eric, can I can ask a question real quick? Yes. Uh, way back when there was discussion about sort of a hierarchy for getting that funding for yes. EMS, would, would this, would serving the new agency impact that in any way? I don't believe so. Okay. So um, it's not going to like knock us off or put us at the bottom? No. Okay. No, because we are still an established okay. uh, ambulance service. Good. Uh, and we are a transport service mm -hmm. uh, where some of our surrounding communities are transport. So they're going to get a little piece of the pie, um, but also the transport service will, should get a larger piece. Good question. So just some of the benefits of putting this 28 agency together, uh, accountability and tax funds with all of the funds, uh, open books, Having those board of directors make the decision uh, with equal representation from everyone. Fire and safety education for our community, audited yearly from a private firm and state recording with all impacted citizens in mind, providing advanced level patient care, hiring much needed resources, projecting needs of a future with those who know and understand uh, the fire and EMS service, and financial management of the budget with appropriate equity input. From all the best of parties. So my next slide here, and that might be hard to read from back there, but just kind of looking at our timeline. So the task force has been put together with representatives from rural, representatives from the city council, and representatives from the fire department have been meeting the last three or four months. I can't remember how long. Um, and we have basically come up with, you know, all of the things that are going to be needed for us to achieve this. So I just have a timeline here, and this is maybe an aggressive timeline, but you gotta put something down. Um, so if we agree to move forward with this, uh, which I believe there'll be a vote at the October 4th meeting, uh, city council meeting, we have basically four months um, to get some of these to do's done, um, and potentially have an agency official start in that beginning of February time frame. Now, again, that might be a little bit aggressive. There are a number of bullet points down here. I won't go through them all unless you want me to. Um, but I think if we all come together and decide this is what we need to do to move forward, we answer all these questions below. Uh, I think this is what community needs. Any additional questions? I just want to I just want to say on the record how hard that you and Nikki and me and Dave have come together to work on this. It's really been a team effort. So I very much appreciate the work that it really And Dick too from for coming, you know, and bringing us information to the role. And for you new council members, um, if you have questions after this, by all means reach out to me. I'd be happy to go through this and make questions. All right, thank you all for your time. Thank you. Thank you.